Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, and I'm joined by my lovely wife, Rochelle. Shell, second episode, uh, 2019, video version. How are you feeling? Uh, Good. I guess you getting you get you getting used no, to this camera being no, right here in front of you. No, <laughs> it's really bad when you have to edit it and look at yourself on camera. Is that weird? Oh, yeah. I get used to being, I guess, on the camera. Well, you've but, been doing it for ten years. Yeah, it's a little difficult. Well, I understand. Yeah, was so, it hard for you when you first started watching yourself on camera? I, I never really watched myself on camera. <laughs> You're just like, ooh, who's that handsome man? Yeah, that's right. Who's that handsome joker? <laughs> So what are we talking about today? We're talking about brisket. We did a yeah, we video this brisket. week. We're going to talk about what all, you know. We're going to talk about some Super Bowl recipes you cook. Just kind of briefly talk about what you cooked on Super yeah. Bowl. Well, after doing the podcast last weekend and then Saturday, let's talk about Saturday first. Okay. I had an interesting Saturday. Did a bunch of redneck stuff. <laughs> Went over. <laughs> My buddy Mark, uh, y'all, y'all have probably uh, heard Mark Williams on the podcast before. He's from Swan Life. He was Life. in the experiment video. He did the steak experiment yeah. video with me. Well, he did um, somehow, I guess it was a lady that works with his wife. Yeah, some friends of theirs. Yeah, some friends of theirs. Yeah. Um, wanted to do, wanted Mark to teach the, um, her husband how to cook a brisket because he's getting into barbecue and she'd bought him a gateway drum for a, a present a while back. And yeah, she for, wanted to do something special for him for Christmas. Yeah. And so she bought him a, cla- a, a brisket class, for, a brisket lesson from Mark Williams from Swine Life. I don't and, think he charged for it. Oh, he did. Oh, he just did that for free. I think so. Maybe he just wanted a drinking buddy that day. <laughs> well, he told me he was getting paid. I didn't get paid. He asked uh, me if I would come over and help, and I was like, "Man, I'd love to." I wouldn't do anything Saturday, so we went over there, took the uh, j- hauled the Jambo trailer over there. We uh, fired up uh, two pits. We we cooked on a Gateway drum and the Jambo. We did two briskets. His wife also bought him on one of these Snake River. Uh, briskets, the the Wagyu briskets, like we cook in con- competitions, yeah. and uh, so we trimmed it. We showed him how to trim the brisket. We actually put a knife in his hand. It was like, look, we're gonna trim. I brought one of the primes over from Costco. I've been cooking. Yeah. And it was, was there like, a difference fa- when you lined them up, like the 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 Wagyu up against the prime? Heck yeah! Really. Oh man, it's like it blows it away. I mean, you got to think that that Wagyu beef is it's just marbled more. Yeah. It, it, they're, they're selecting better briskets. Um, I mean, it it blows that Costco brisket out the water. There ain't no comparison as far as that goes. Yeah. I mean, even as far as the taste from the finished product, it was yeah. just better. They're it was hands more down. Tender. Yeah. Moist, I mean, it's tender, got it's got yeah. more fat in it. So when you cook it, you render it down. The, the mouth feels going to be better. It's got more flavor to it. It's going to be juicier. All the way around, Snake River was, was awesome. Yeah. Then they are. They're good briskets. Um, Costco brisket's not bad. It's just not in that it's league. Whole it's, yeah. it's not in that league. It's a whole I mean, different league, yeah. like you said. I've cooked some. I mean, I cooked a good one on the recipe this week. That was a Costco brisket prime. Uh, there wasn't nothing wrong with it. Now I, I ain't got deep enough pockets to, to to order that much Wagyu to cook for the video. But yeah, I'd like to one day. I, have I ever done? I don't know if I've ever done a Wagyu brisket on a video. Have I? I, don't I might need know. to holler at Kevin down there. Give him some of them A fives. That's what cool. I've been cooking in contest. But Aren't yeah, you so tired of cooking brisket. Heck no, I love cooking brisket. <laughs> we but, cook. You cooked a lot of briskets here in the past month. So we seasoned those two briskets up. We cooked Saturday. Uh, we did them the same way, except one we did um, more of uh, wrapped in foil with the poured a little au jus in there, a little brisket marinade. Uh, I think I think Mark had a bottle of Cosmos actually, and that's what we poured in there. Some of his brisket mop. And then the other one we did kind of just Texas style where you just wrapped it in some butcher paper and rolled no injection. And, uh, man, it was so good. That was a snake river. Snake river really don't need injection. It's got so much flavor in the meat. Uh, it don't, it don't need it as much. So, uh, it took us all day to cook those. We were out there, you know, feeding a stick every 45 minutes and, uh, Having a few cold ones, shooting some guns, riding around the side by sides, listening to country music. I'll tell you, redneck things. That's what. <laughs> So you had a done. good Saturday. I had a great Saturday. The weather was beautiful. It was like a spring day. It got up to like 72, broke out the shorts. Yeah, Man, it was a it beautiful was, day. It was a beautiful day. Me and Michael and it, came over for dinner. Yeah, y'all came over for dinner. and that, we, we also we cooked uh, a couple times. slabs of baby back ribs on the on the stick burner. That was the best thing I had all day. They were better. You thought those were better than that snake river brisket? <sighs> Tip for that. 
Really, it was good. Yeah, we just did dry know. ribs, and when, then right when they right before they got done, a little bit, we wrapped them in the uh, butcher paper too, just to see what it'd do with some baby backs. Man, you talk about good. Those ribs were tender. They had some flavor on them. The bark stayed, you know, perfect on them. It wasn't mushy at all. Yeah, we didn't sauce them. They were just dry rib. And then when you, you know, they weren't falling off the bones, but when you cut them and you can just take the bones and peel exactly. it right they off. And perfect that's how you make, that's how you make a good, that's a sign of a good rib to me. If you and take that bone was, and pull it right um, out. I asked rib. Mark, he said he seasoned it with AP and then swine life, I think. Those are just Kroger ribs. Yeah. Well, they were, were froze. Really? We, we stopped by that morning. We come back to the house after we got everything on. I got my guns, my bullets, and went back over there and uh, stopped at Kroger and picked up a couple slabs of ribs just to to throw them on and uh man it was we had a good day but that got me pumped up after we talked about super bowl cooking and i cooked saturday all day i was ready to i jumped up sunday morning and was like shell is fired up <laughs> so i did i did those jerk pork tenderloin sliders which were awesome those were really good i did those some turned barbecue out better bologna. than you did originally the you think so yeah. i did some barbecue bologna and i also did the nacho pork butt for the nachos but let's mm-hmm. talk about those let's which talk one? about so the bologna now Hands down, I put a picture of it on Instagram. Yeah. If you hadn't seen it, it's you know I kind of put that little cross hatch in it, put some rub on it, put it on a pit. You can run it at two fifty. You can run it at three, whatever temperature you want to run it on. Get some smoke on some bologna, and when it gets dried out on top and it opens up a little bit from where you've made that cross hatch on it. Um, and well, one thing I do to them to get a little more surface area, I cut the I take the the stick of bologna. And kind of cut it in half where it's kind of half moon shaped. Mm-hmm. And then I make my cross hatch kind of on the rounded part of it. I, I cook it the flat part down where I made that cut, put rub on all of it. And then as it opens up, I take sauce and just glaze it on. Like the last hour and a half, I keep cooking it till it almost candies with that sauce on there. It pretty much you, does. You got to watch the temperature because it will over caramelize and you can start getting some bitter taste. But just watch it and start brushing that sauce on there. And man, that's some of the best stuff you can eat. Oh, also, um, there's a little store down in Brandon, Mississippi. I was down there last week, and I stopped by and got some sausage. I, I bought three different kinds, but the kind I cooked Sunday was a, it was a pineapple and Jack. You Jack couldn't cheese. taste the pineapple. I th- the pineapple is very faint, but I will tell you, I think they're putting it in there to tenderize it yeah. a little bit. It gives we it a little about sweetness. This last week yeah. Too, yeah, it gives it a little sweetness. But I threw those on the smoker with a little bit of rub on them, so it had kind of bologna and sausage, which was really good. If you're a brand in Mississippi really and you know good. where Van Sporting Good is, there's a little little grocery store, like a hometown little grocery store, right across the street, and they're making that sausage in that store. It has a little butcher shop in the back, and man, they got some good sausage. It's fantastic. When you first pulled it out and we're, uh, and we're about to cook it on Sunday, it didn't look like like regular store bought smoked sausage to me. It looked like homemade. Smoked oh yeah, sausage. it's it's not going to look it's like a your thicker. The brine yeah. or the Smoky Hollow or Johnsonville—it doesn't look like that. Mm-hmm. This is this looks like it's case sausage. It's not you know it's not cut into links. It's a big rope. They they do it in about three pound packages, all one big. You know they kind of looped up. It looks like it looks like somebody made some case some sausage at home. That's what it looks like. It's the like real me. deal. Yeah. Like and the kind that my dad and his brothers used to yeah. cook. Yeah, well, they know how to make sausage down that part of Mississippi. I promise you. <laughs> Vans does a ton of deer processing. They're they're famous for their their deer smoked sausage, but this is just pork. It's you know it's sold in the grocery store and it's really good. And the, it had large, you know, fairly large chunks of cheese throughout. The closest really thing good. you can get to it in a grocery store would be like our Walmart's carries the Country Pleasing brand, which is yeah. also from down around that area from Florence where you're from. And there's an Alabama sausage you can buy called Koneka, and that sausage is kind of really similar. Thin, they, I mean, really. Well, they have different size. They have different size. You know, they've got that small one, and they've got a bigger Koneka. And then, but yeah, it's, it's got that same kind of, um, I call it, I don't know, old country, country type smoked yeah. sausage flavor. It's old like a fashion, homemade, yeah, yeah, old fashioned. But it's really, really good. You did. And a- so I did the jerk pork tenderloins. And, those are the true inner tenderloin, not jerk, not the loin, not that comes off the back of the hog, the inner loin. What do you and think? They weigh about like a pound a piece? They're probably about a pound, pound and a half a piece. They come, usually you can find them in a two pack. A lot of times they have them already marinated and seasoned, but I get the ones that are just natural and they come in two packs. I bought two packs, so I cut four of them. And then, um, I wanted to try out one of those 30 minute marinades. I bought the, I think it was a, I think it was Casey Masterpiece had it. They had a Caribbean one I saw down on the bottom shelf at Kroger. 
And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to give that a shot because I was, you know, just experimenting a little bit. I, I did, a, I poured about half a bottle in there with them in a Ziploc bag. And it says go 30 minutes. I went about four hours. I extended <laughs> that time to get some more flavor on them. And I took them out and kind of, uh, you know, just kind of strained them off a little bit, got some of that excess moisture and seasoned them with my jerk seasoning from the recipe. And you can find that on the, on the app or on the website, wherever there's a video that I've done these before. Mm -hmm. I just kind of, you know, followed really, it my yeah. own little way, put my own little other spin on my <laughs> recipe, but, and I seasoned them. I got them on the egg. I got it good and hot. It's probably running about 400 degrees without the deflector plate. Cause I wanted to, you know, get some of that lump flavor as the meat was dripping down on it. And I just started searing them kind of two minutes and then kind of roll it a little bit and go two minutes. And then I did that for eight minutes, kind of get all four kind of sides of a round tenderloin. And then I moved them out to the edges where they're away from the fire and just started watching them with my thermopin. And I would, and I took them to there about 135, 140, brought them in, let them carry over a little bit. And that's where we, I got your help to, to start putting them together. Yeah. And it made enough for what, 36, uh, three packages of the King's Hawaiian slider. Yeah. And there's a, tw rolls. there were 12 roll packs. Yeah. Um, one thing I kind of liked is they got just a little bit of char on the outside. And mm -hmm. to me, that's like what jerk's all about, you know? Um, so you got just a little bit of that char, not enough that it's burnt, but it's almost like a caramelization, a dark caramelization. Yeah. On the it's really like jerk chicken kind yeah. of, yeah. It gives you that essence of, yeah. well, it's just been grilled until it chars a little. Yeah. The it sugars and all this. And I, well, I didn't, I didn't tell you, but I also made the glaze. Yeah. So the recipe for the glaze is on there. And instead of what I did different in that was I substituted the ketchup that I had in that recipe with a little bit of that extra marinade that I, you know, I didn't pour out of the bottle. I just, I think it was half a cup, maybe. I was just off the top of my head. I went by my recipe and I said, I had ketchup. I said, I'm going to try this jerk glaze in the in place of the ketchup. It was fantastic. It was so, really good. So, you made me try it. You're oh, like, yeah, it was good. It was, it was probably the best jerk. I got to figure out how to make that stuff. It can't yeah. be that much to it. But then I brushed that on during that last process when I moved it off, kind of got it, let it char up and get saucy. And that's what made them really good. But I had some of that left over in a squeeze bottle. So when you took those um, Hawaiian rolls and split them in half and laid them over as a big sheet of bread, don't break them up into individual rolls yeah. yet. It's kind of they're all connected together. Yeah, you I just get take a, a bread knife, knife and, and just slice it so they split, you know, yeah. so I can make a top and a bottom. Right. And it's one big piece of kind of bread. They're sectioned out, but they're still connected the way they bake them. Yeah. So you were slicing the pork loin and you tried to slice it pretty fairly thin. You know? As thin as I could with a knife, it would, yeah. uh, excuse me, it probably went, I don't know if I had to say a little bit less than eighth inch. Yeah. I wanted to be able to stack two or three little slices of pork on each little sandwich, but the, the, it's really tender. And then, man, it just makes a really good bite to, to slice it thin instead of having it's a really hunk. really tender. Don't think of slicing it like a, a pork chop or something like that. Yeah. You're slicing it way thinner, about half of a brisket slice, really. Yeah. So that's be about it's eighth like inch. It's like a thick luncheon meat slice. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. But so... You opened them up, put a little sauce on the bottom. I put a little sauce on the bottom. Because when I make a sandwich like that, I don't want it to get too bready and dry, you know. Especially when you're taking it somewhere. It has a tendency to dry out in that process. So I put a little sauce on the bottom of the, um, you know, on the bottom bun. And then we laid several little, like you said, two or three pieces of meat, you know, all along the, the base of the bread. And then I came back with the sauce, squirted a little more on top of that. And then we put your... Uh, Caribbean slaw. Caribbean yeah. slaw. That was kind of a, a tropical slaw. I'm going to change the name of that slaw. one. Because I, I substituted out the mangoes, added a little jalapeno instead of the, the habanero. You had a little and then cilantro added too. some cilantro. So it was, really, it was really good slaw. It was excellent. Um, I like the slaw better with the crushed pineapples than I do the diced mangoes. But you got to, I did drain the crushed pineapple, put it in a strainer, and let it sit there a few minutes because it'll make your slaw, the slaw too uh, runny. Yeah. You would it, add like it's a not a creamy slaw. I used vinegar and I used um, a little juice. The recipe's on there too for that. It's it's just a I think I called it Caribbean slaw, mm -hmm. but it's good. I added a little red onion to it too. It so really it's not it. like a mayonnaisey type slaw. No, all. no, it's really it's it's kind of it's almost like a. I, I mean, I still call it a coleslaw, but it's more like a vinegary coleslaw. Yeah. It was very, but it very goes good, good with those little sandwiches with that jerk then, pork because they're spicy and they're sweet and they're crunchy from the char, mm -hmm. and the meat's tender. And then you got that slaw to kind of bright, balance that out. Yeah, it was real bright. I mean, they went. I mean, it made a big pan of them. We just put them like in a full size aluminum pan, covered with a full, stuck a toothpick in yeah. each one, and then you cut them. That's, yeah, that's when what you I cut say. Them. I put the slaw on, then I put the top bun on, and then I toothpick each one 
with a, you know, you need a pretty decent, party pick. yeah, a party pick, and then I'll cut them. And that make that makes it so much easier. Oh yeah, they're yeah. trying to make build each little one. You're building you're building twelve at a time instead yeah. of you know each little one. And it filled up three um, three packs of the Hawaiian rolls. Um, we had a little bit of pork left over. That was lunch the next day. <laughs> yeah, but it filled up um, a large uh, food service pan. Mm-hmm. Three of them did, so it worked out really perfect. And then I did a pork butt, but it was just standard. I didn't do anything special there. I just used How'd some rubs that I had in the. I cross hatched the fat a little bit to get them, you know, little crunchies, and then I seasoned it with a lay pea and rub and threw it on. Went a couple hours in the smoke, wrapped it, and then uh, that was it. That was, you know, took it took it up to about two hundred and pulled it off, let it rest a little bit, and you pulled it up while I got ready because I'd been cooking all day. Yeah, <laughs> I said you probably need to take a shower. But the uh, good thing that man, another thing you made that nacho cheese to go with it, and it was just a, I mean, I just really standard can cheese. of nacho cheese, but you doctored it up a little. I did. Um, I put a little milk in it because it's a little thick, you know, for regular nachos. Just in a crock pot. Yeah. I, put, I, dumped, a, I dumped a five. Number five can Number of five cheese. can of cheese into the crock pot. Add a little milk. Um, I put a little cumin in it. I put a little um, cayenne in it. I put some uh, jalapeno juice because that vinegar kind of mm-hmm, mm-hmm. will level things out. It goes with and nachos. A little spice, yeah. Um, and then I put a little, we call it, it's called Julio seasoning. We use it a lot at the house, but it's like MSG and Mexican MSG seasoning. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you can't go wrong with that. If you see uh, some Mexican, if you ever go to a Mexican restaurant and there's a little jar of like chip seasoning on the table, it's usually a Julio's type seasoning. Julio's is good. I get it on Amazon. Yeah. Um, but that's all I did to the, the cheese, mix it up. Good to go. So we took the crock pot over there, put the shredded pork. You hit it. You did hit it with a little sauce and a little AP. Yeah, and after pulled I it. pulled the por- pulled pork, I just put a little AP, a little barbecue rub, and a little sauce. We had Not a, enough that you're like that you can tell that someone has doctored up the pulled pork afterwards, but just enough to you know keep it moist, add a little flavor. Yeah. Well, well then we took that over to the Super Bowl party, and um, over there on the grill. They had a grill full of wings. Um, he did some of them bacon wrapped. Did you try any of those? No, they I were did, good. Had the, had the poppers going. They and he were, had them crispy. Like that bacon wasn't floppy. It was like sticking yeah, it to was the good. wing, and it was. It the looked, wings were good. Yeah. You know something I had there that somebody brought that I thought I was like, man, this is awesome. It was pickled Brussels sprouts. Yeah. Did you ever had those? I, I never. I didn't know that existed. I didn't either. They were good. They were good. To, they, she's. Um, I asked. Um, Jamie. Yeah, Jamie, where she bought those, and she it was they come from Kroger, but I've never seen them. I'm gonna have to look for them. She said they're in the pickled section, like you know they, they have that pickled where I get the gar- roasted garlic and stuff. Oh, the little uh, the that's what bar? I understood, like yeah. the little pickled salad bar deal. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's, that's what uh, she told me. Yeah, that's that botulism good, like- waiting to happen on that <laughs> bar. <laughs> I usually steer clear of that one. <laughs> Just open air stuff rush. sitting there waiting for you. Everybody's I wish I'd have known that before that. I ate some, but hey, I was okay. I guess it didn't kill me. Maybe the vinegar kills it. There you go. Ooh. Thanks. Um, Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so this week we're running a little behind schedule because we've had um, a busy week. We've had we, a very busy week. we jumped right back in. We did. Uh, that's the reason why we want to talk about brisket today because that's what. First recipe we came back with for our uh, YouTube v- uh, recipe videos was brisket on a stick burner, and I, I've kind of been warning y'all that I was that I've been practicing on my stick burner, and it, and it wasn't so much of a um, a recipe. I mean, it was a recipe. I did do a recipe, but really, it was kind of like learning. I'm learning yeah. to cook on the stick burner. I'm by no means a master of it. It's still uh, something I'm working on. But I tell you what, that was a Damn fine brisket it was shell. Very good. It was good. It was as good as it looked on video. You yeah. did an outstanding job editing it, but man, there it, was, I didn't have to work too hard at that one. Really, you know, was, what we got was what we got. You know, we and got up good. early uh, Tuesday morning. Well, I was going to talk about the lunch and learn first. Okay, yeah. Well, we did that yesterday. So <laughs> that's that, that, uh, I, what's a lunch and learn shell. Um, it's where you come to the house and we feed you lunch and then we do a demo and you learn something and you learn right? something. Yeah. So, um, we've done two of these. This will be our second one that we've done. Um, but we had six people come over to the house yesterday. Uh, it was kind of a company. It's usually a corporate type deal. Um, we fed them lunch and then you and Heath Riles did a demo for them. Y'all did, uh, 
We did a sausage and cheese tray, and of course we had bologna on it for when they first showed up. That's a Memphis staple. Mm-hmm. If you come to, if you if you're outside of Memphis and you come and you're getting barbecue, that's the appetizer that I'm always going to give you. That's what we're going to get when we go to the barbecue restaurant. If you go on a crawl with me, it's that's uh, most of the time that's one of my favorite things. A barbecue restaurant. I judge I judge you on okay. how well your sausage and, and cheese plate is. And you would think that sausage and cheese should be easy to do, but no. You can yeah, mess it up. It's it <laughs> nothing to it. but So basically, they showed up, and we had a cooler full of beer. You know, and we had other non-alcoholic drinks. and um, But we had it all set up for them. They show up. We set them down. We had a sausage, cheese, bologna plate. And then you and Heath, like, started cutting up ribs and talking to them about that. We did ribs two ways. We did the traditional Memphis dry baby back rib that, you're gonna, that you know, that Memphis is known for. We also did a little competition style uh Kind of, you know, spicy, sweet, little sticky kind of rib, baby back rib. Um, I did the herb smoked chicken that, mm-hmm. that Mark Lambert showed me how to do on the Red Box uh, last year. That was phenomenal. I did it on, I did it on the Memphis Wood Fire Grill, though. And then um, we also... You basically I, just spatchcocked yeah. that chicken and roasted on a bed of herbs. Yeah. If you notice in that brisket video I did this week, There was something else wrapped up over on the left (laughs) side. That was the brisket that I served these guys. I cooked it uh, at the same time Tuesday. And, and, you know, um, it it was really surprisingly fantastic reheated. Because what I did when I took it, you know, I took it off and rested it, of course. But then I put it in a, uh, wrapped it up in foil when it cooled off and stuck it in the refrigerator. And I didn't slice it till, was that Wednesday night? The night before they were coming for lunch, I went ahead and sliced it cold. And then I put it all back together and had it in a pan, and we just added some of his uh, beef injection to it the next morning. Just to look, it's kind of a beef stocky kind of liquid, just to give it some moisture. Covered it in full and threw it back on the pit and let it re- reheat. In the and juice, man, it was good. It was, it was really good because you know you don't get any when you wrap a brisket in butcher paper. You don't get any uh, ju- or juice from it. It all gets absorbed in the paper, drips out. But so putting it back in that. Made it real good. Yeah. Excuse me. Well, um, I thought it was cool how we served it because we took a a metal tray. It was like a fourth aluminum pan. Put butcher paper on it, and then we put what'd you get? A quarter chicken. You got a quarter chicken with, with the white Alabama sauce. white sauce over it. You got two. Um, a couple slices of brisket. A couple slices of brisket. Let's see. Uh, two bones of baby back ribs. Uh, sauce. Two bones dry. Then we had the burn ends on the table, and then you had the sides that you yeah. did. So you I did, did uh, broccoli salad, potato salad, and beans. Baked beans, yeah. So, man, that was a triple threat. It was really you had three good. three proteins, three sides, sausage and cheese, and banana pudding. And I served banana pudding in little jars. And we did the demos. So yeah. then we showed them, you know, and after And then after everybody, they ate, ate. Yeah, we started it with the prep, and mm-hmm. that's when I showed them how to how to spatchcock a chicken, how to season it, how to put the herb bed. Took it out to the pit and got it on as the pits were still going, and then we come back in and did the ribs. I trimmed those up from out straight out of the package and and seasoned them and, and put them on the pit, and then then I broke down a brisket and showed them how to you know trim a brisket and get it seasoned up and all that. So our goal was to hurt them. It was I think we did. Everybody was ready for a nap. Some of them, you know, got to drinking beer, so they was ready to go. But I don't, <laughs> I don't think anybody was hungry. Yeah. But it was a fun time, and I enjoy those because, I mean, it's right here at the house. And you get to know somebody. It's not like in a classroom setting yeah. where there's a lot of people. It's a lot more comfortable. I get than to, your classroom yeah. Setting. Well, I get I get to talk to each one of them, and you know, it's just like a buddy sitting around a table when we do that. So it's fun. Yeah, six people is very manageable. You yeah. know. Plus and you and we feed have, them good. Yeah, you can feed them good. Really do it the right way. And you know, sometimes when we do anything, even if we're just cooking, you know, at the house for family or whatever, um, when you're cooking that much stuff, sometimes you have stuff that doesn't turn out as good as you want it to, you know. But yesterday, it was hitting. It was all hitting. Cylinders. I didn't think we had any weight left. Yeah, that was uh, that's the case. You know, sometimes something sometimes just doesn't turn just, out. Yeah, sometimes it lines up and did. everything's good. I was I was extremely happy with it. You know, when everybody left, they stayed almost four hours. Mm-hmm. But I that made me a big deal. plate of the sides. God, that broccoli salad shell, that was to die for I thought the man. potato salad was pretty good. It was good. But and you did the potato salad where you put the um, the, the it's cheese. Your recipe. And, well, yeah, it's our recipe. And I the guess. bacon in it. Yeah. Oh, I didn't and the green onion. It. Was it just green onions and yeah, cheese? Yeah, it's green onion and bacon. It's so no cheese. Going okay. I don't know why I'm thinking cheese. Everything had bacon, though, except the beans. I guess the beans were vegan. 
Did you put any meat in the beans? No, I did not. The beans are pretty easy. I like a good, simple baked bean when you've got a lot of other stuff going on. You like to put a lot of stuff in your baked beans. I, I like them loaded, man. Yeah. You get meat in there. I like putting sausage and pulled pork, maybe some brisket, some onions, some peppers, some apple pie filling or some peach pie filling. I like it all. Brown sugar, barbecue sauce. I mean, there's beans in it. But it's, <laughs> it's, it is really, man, it's good. See, I like a more simple You just bean. like like pork and beans out of a can of ketchup? One guy told me those are the best baked beans he ever had. They weren't pork and beans, by the way. They were really good. Yeah. This went, yeah. One of the guys said that he thought he had ate, but he thought that he had ate some good baked beans, and he honestly said those were the best baked beans that he'd ever had. See? So hey, yeah, man, that's high praise, Shell, because you did the beans. All I did was cook them. I put them on yeah, the pit. Yeah, I just assembled them. I put them on. Put on the you know, pit. I cooked those on that Traeger. I just had it on like two seventy five, and those beans. I put covered them on there. Or uncovered. They were uncovered the whole way. Yeah. Like I don't know. Three and a half hours, and then I had to cook the bologna and sausage on top of them and glaze oh, let it, it drip. And drip in. I mean, there wasn't much dripping out of bologna and sausage. Oh, so they weren't some. vegan. Yeah, they were. They probably weren't. <laughs> I'm not. I don't cook too much vegan stuff. <laughs> even our sides, even yeah. our vegetable sides have meat in it. Okay, so now let's talk about the, the pudding. On the I guess it has milk, so it's not vegan either. It's vegetarian. Yeah. Banana pudding. Yeah. But it's not vegan. But it's not vegan. I don't know what it is good. Yeah. The banana pudding turned out really good, too. Mm-hmm. Cause sometimes the pudding just doesn't set just right, but it did yesterday. So you never was... had your banana pudding. People are missing out. Yeah. Same guy told me I should enter a pudding contest. Really? I didn't know they have one now. Okay. Now we can talk about brisket on your, your recipe this My week. recipe. So, coming back, I've been saying I was going to do it. And I knew, you know, Jambo it got my new pit last year. Been cooking on it some, but I've now I've done I don't know four or five briskets, and the ones the last one I did, it was as good as it looked on video. I mean, it was simple. It really wasn't about what all I did to the brisket. I just put some uh, kosher salt and black pepper first, equal parts, dusted it. Mm-hmm. I did a little trim on it. Uh, I didn't get yeah. I didn't get crazy with it. No, I just did. Uh, what do you? What's important to you when you trim a brisket for uh, co- you know, home cooking? I just like to knock that deckle of fat down some, kind of round it off, take out the hump on the backside, cut off the oxidized meat around the edge if there's any where you know from packaging. Take off a little bit of the sinew on top of the flat and just make it like a quarter inch thick fat. I don't want you know I want it to just kind of lay flat and you know not have and, and, and render and render. And, yeah. and I want the heat to roll over it even. I don't want it to curl up. So you kind of. Take that into consideration when you're trimming it, and it'll turn out good. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not it's not hard to trim one at all. It's not aggressive like a comp trim. You know, we're just cooking a whole brisket, and then you uh, see the comp trim. Yeah, there's videos on that. Some of those are old though. I don't we'll talk about yeah. those in a minute because, uh, but yeah, so I did that. I seasoned it with the salt and pepper. Hit it with just a little bit of hot rub to give it a little bit more spice, a little bit of color, and then uh, got the stick, got the jambo going. Well, the hot uh, rub's kind of your beef go-to beef yeah and you know i mean in in the jambo so they don't come with the charcoal basket but i bought one and i I bought the bar grates too there was from a company i think they're in kansas city or so i can't remember out but they shipped it to me but um i need to look that up so i can give that guy a shout out where i got it from yeah but anyway so i have a charcoal basket in there and i get a good bed of coals going if you didn't you could just pile up pile up some charcoal in your stick burner what was that you were telling me about um and you bought a, an attachment that allows you to start it up the night before. Oh, it's like the little uh, charcoal fuse, I guess it, it would be. It, is that what they call it, it? It's for getting some sleep. I don't know what they call I think it is. It's something like that. I don't know if that's the exact name. That's kind of what I call it. But all it is is like a little expanded metal L-shaped uh, track that you could stack up coals and turn a corner, and it'll go butt right up against your uh, charcoal basket. And you fill up the charcoal basket. You fill up that track, and then you light one end of the track with a couple of wax cubes, and it um, slowly burns. So, so say if you were cooking over, you know, you, know you were going to be cooking the next morning. Mm-hmm. You could start it like at eleven o'clock the night before, and by the time you got up in the morning, you know, you keep it shut down pretty low, just a little bit of airflow. But you got a good bed of coals when you get up, and then you just go straight to putting your sticks on, jump, open it up, and it'll rock and roll. Can we I- did that. We actually did that over at Marks to see how it would do. Mark filled it up, started it about 11, um, Friday night. And when I got there that next morning, about six 30, it was rocking and it was ready to roll. All we had to do was put 
stick of wood on it and jumped right up 275 and we're ready to cook smoker's already hot cook chamber's ready because that's one thing about those the, or that particular stick burner is it takes it an hour hour and a half to get up well if you're starting it from cold and it's cool outside it does take it a minute yeah. to get going i mean so that you got to get a better coals yeah. but so you don't want to start you don't want to start cooking directly over charcoal on it i mean you might get some of that off flavor but once you get that bed of coals hot and you got some good seasoned wood you're ready to roll and i found that about I don't know, every 45 minutes to an hour, that's what I was setting my timer for, 45 minutes, I'd go out there and put another stick on it. That's the only thing that's been, I mean, if it's not, it hasn't been difficult at all cooking. It cooks like a dream. But the um, you just got, you have to put a stick of wood on it every 45 minutes to an hour to keep, to maintain. And it'll let you know because it reacts. It reacts a lot faster than I ever thought it would by the way you open and close that I exhaust vent. I noticed that too when we were. I mean, I can shoot it up to three twenty five real fast in five, within five minutes. If I close it down, it's going to drop right back to the two seventy five. It doesn't really seem to want to run. I don't. I don't run it any lower than two seventy five. Really, mm-hmm. that seems to be optimal. I mean, that's barely cracked open on the exhaust, and you can feel it pulling air through. I mean, you can kind of, when you know when you're when you're right there on it. It's just. Steady drawing it back. There's no back burn. It's not smoking back out the door. That's what I mean. Yeah. And I run the door wide open. Not 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 um, the vents on the door wide yeah. open. Yeah. Hundred percent. So you have a hundred percent open to draw to draw, to draw in, and then, and then it's probably at the five o'clock position. I don't know. It's probably maybe a quarter open is what I'd call that. I hadn't got up there and like looked down in it to see. I think the three o'clock's wide open. So it doesn't have much play as far as. That seems like a time for Mark. Yeah, I need to get him up there and (laughs) looking at that, seeing how far, how far it opens. But we, you know, I've kind of, I feel like I got a good grip on how to run it. I need to do some other stuff on it. I've cooked so far. I've cooked ribs. I've cooked a pork butt. I've cooked four or five briskets. I've cooked pork belly. Hadn't done chicken yet, so I've got to, I've got to work on that coming up. Um, But But we're going to be doing videos on that jambo. Uh, throughout off, the year, yeah. on and off, I'm gonna mix it in. I might take it to some comps. I'm like, you know, I'm planning on using it Memphis and May for something. So yeah, um, I love. So- I love. Man, it is a fan. There, fine pits. I ain't gonna lie. That's money well spent. The um, the bark's really good. It's got a great smoky barbecue flavor, but at the same time, you don't get like that after. After taste yeah, you're not burping up that barbecue smack. I hate that. Yeah, and that's not good barbecue to yeah. me. Good or good brisket. Good brisket to me should have that that a heavier bark on it. I like I call it a heavy bark because it's kind of you know all the seasons cooked on it and it's not it hasn't been steamed off. They don't they don't put it in a pan with juice or they don't wrap it in full. They wrap it in butcher paper if they wrap it at all in in Texas. And that's you know that's kind of what I was going for. And so that's the great thing about cooking with butcher paper. It preserves your bark. People ask me all the time, what, "What's the benefit?" Well, that's it. Um, you know, you're not catching the juice if you, yeah. you know. So that's you gotta, one thing you sacrifice. Yeah. You sacrifice. But you, the bark turns out so much better on one of those briskets. It, even on ribs too. Oh yeah, the butcher paper. Maybe back ribs. Yeah, Whew. they were good. The um, yeah, I don't know what it is about the 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 butcher paper that makes things taste so much better. Is it affecting the taste at all? No, not at all. It's just getting the, it's getting that moisture off of it. You know, it's absorbing that, so it's not sitting in its own moisture, and so the bark doesn't have time to get too soft, or you know, you, yeah, because you spend all the, the first part of the cooking process where you're putting smoke on it, you're just cooking those flavors into it, developing that bark, that crust on the outside, and a lot of times in contest, we're trying to get the tenderness perfect, so we're wrapping it up in foil to you know to do that, so we. Tear it, we destroy our bark we work so hard to make yeah but then you can get it back on the back end sometimes but it's never as good and then well, of course thought, to me sweetness does not belong on brisket yeah. so but i thought that brisket unless you couldn't came comps. out amazing that cord off of me some you know it looked great it tasted great it, was. it filmed it was great good it was a good video shoot for us yeah you know? i think that video will do well i hope so um we had to get up really it. early we set the alarm for like four thirty to get up. Well, there's a lot good because I didn't even run it overnight. I we started yeah. it that morning. We also filmed that little video, kind of introduction to what the jambo yeah. was. Just kind of give it a tour Just of give the it, yeah, so people could see it. And I'm sure if you get questions or anything, you can send them to us. We'll try to answer them about it. I'm not a master of it, but I'm learning. You're getting pretty good. Um, do you feel like you? Uh, you feel like you're 
getting a grip on it. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I can run it. There's nothing to it. There's nothing to it. I mean, you get a bed of hot coals as long as you keep feeding the sticks. Yeah. There's nothing to there's it. There's no real fight in the fire on no, that one. There's no fight in the fire. Yeah. It's just a great design, mm-hmm. I guess. I need to clean it up. It's got some grease in the bottom of it now. Mm-hmm. It's time to drain it, wash it out, um, get it back ready. I'm trying to get it seasoned good. So is there anything you'd do differently for that brisket? Not on that one, man. That one was, it was simple. I didn't inject it. I just put some seasoning on it and ran it and mm-hmm. cooked it till it was done and sliced it. And you, and you had it. You know how good it yeah. was. That was That was <laughs> perfect. It was as good as I'd done uh, uh, that style brisket. I think so, too. Ever. It was one of your top briskets. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't a 180, like, comp brisket, but it was... But I'm not that... I mean... It was, as far as eating goes, that's yeah. how you want to eat. That's eat how brisket. you want to eat brisket. I mean, that's a that's a good representation of, like, a Texas brisket joint. Yeah. And um, we cooked it, rested it, sliced it. Ate it. That's it. <laughs> Still some in there. I'm gonna make some chili out of it tonight. Watch. Good. It's Brisket cold. It's chili. Tough, yeah, cold. You know, so it warmed up here. Now it's gotten freezing cold again. Mm-hmm. So, um, but what else you want to? Oh, what about um? We've got to judge a contest tomorrow. Well, I thought we'd talk all about brisket. Are you gonna talk some more about brisket? All right, what do you want to know? That's the topic of the week. Okay, 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 okay. You hadn't let me see these questions and stuff, so. I feel like you're checking out on me already. Is it? Well, I keep getting these text messages. People want me to do stuff. <laughs> Let's go do this. Yeah. Redneck things. <laughs> okay. All right. You got to give me a few more minutes. Tell me all about cooking brisket. Because brisket I can do is it. like the question we get the most of. Yeah. It, it. You know, I will say this. Okay. Being a good pit master or whatever, barbecue or whatever you want to call yourself, I've always said that. Hog is probably the way to measure a good if somebody knows how to cook a whole yeah. hog. Well, brisket also falls in that category. If you if, if you can cook a good brisket and you can cook a whole hog, you ought to be able to master any kind of barbecue anybody can throw at you, any kind of meat anybody can throw at you. That's the judge. Now brisket is t- is a is a super challenge um because it's it's just a tough cut of meat to start with. I mean those muscles in a cow are used all the time. That chest muscle, the way that it comes down and wraps around the ribs, when that cow gets up and it moves around, that's why it's tough. And that's why it's, you know, it's, it, it's just a tough cut of meat to start with. Yeah. It used to be cheap. Now brisket's kind of like, it, yeah. it's, it's kind of like chicken wings. You know, chicken wings, you had to give them away. They, they, they couldn't sell them and now it costs more than breast. Well, brisket's getting up there where it costs mm-hmm. as much as steak. And How especially. How much does the comp brisket cost? If you're going to buy a comp brisket, well, I'm you're going to buy 200 bucks because yeah. I'm buying, the, you know, the best one of those Wagos one. from Snake River or A5 from the butcher shop. I mean, I'm spending 200 bucks easy on yeah, a brisket for a brisket. Yeah. And that's, and I mean, that's crazy, but they're good. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it takes that to win. I mean, I think it takes it. If the other guys are cooking them, I'm not going to let them beat me just because they got a better brisket than I do. I want the best. You did get a case of those prime briskets. I got a Sam's. good deal on those. Those were three. That was at Costco. Oh, yeah. Two ninety nine a pound. Now see that's more like it. And they're good briskets. They were all about I would say that when I cooked I didn't weigh it, but it's probably about thirteen pounds, thirteen yeah. or fourteen pounds. And that's a good size brisket to cook at home. If you're starting out cooking brisket, that's where you want to be. You don't want to mess with the little ones. I we get questions. I got a three pound brisket. Yeah. I I you know, what's up with that is I think um their stores are getting them in and they got the butchers back there cutting them up. They're probably cutting the center out of a small brisket to begin with. They're trying to get two pieces out of it to sell to somebody. And then they're grinding the rest up. And then you're just shooting yourself in the foot to start with. You can, you'd be better off buying one. And then if you want to grind, you know, trim it to the size you want. And then, and then, cause you got the whole brisket. A lot of times they're just a piece of flat or a piece of point or something like that. And man, I, honestly, I would never cook that. Never. I think the deal is I'd cook just are- a straight flat. Yeah. And you can buy those too. Costco sells them. Sam sells them. Uh, Walmart sells them. Uh, you can get a straight flat like that. I but. think the people were thinking like, you know, I don't know how to cook brisket, so I'm gonna buy this three pounder. The smaller, one more manageable. Yeah, so I don't waste any money. So I don't, you know, so I can do something like you said, more manageable. And then it turns out terrible. And then it turns out terrible, and they want to know why. Yeah. Because. Well, it's better. I think it's better to start out with a a, a smaller whole packer. 
buy the briskets in that, you know, 11 a, to 14, 15 pound range, somewhere what's the in cost there. Of a pack of brisket, 14 pound range, Costco. I would probably like 60, 50 or 60 bucks, okay. which that's expensive to play with. Yeah. I mean, it makes brisket cooking a challenge right there because a lot of people don't want to waste. They think if it doesn't turn out good, they're wasting it. Yeah. 50, so, bucks, I mean, yeah. but that's why I mean, that's part of learning how to cook one. You got to buy them and cook them. And I promise you, they're not going to turn out good at first. My first brisk- <laughs> briskets were horrendous. <laughs> I mean, we didn't know. I got a story for you on that. So <laughs> the first time, okay, you may, you, I know you remember this. First time we it. cooked brisket, it wasn't, I, I, we didn't know what brisket were. We were cooking um, backyard contests. I mean, this is what, 15, 20, 20 years, years ago? ago. Yeah, yeah, every bit of 20 years ago. And then we were cooking the contest. Uh, it was, it was just a May. backyard contest. Yeah. No, no, it wasn't even sanctioned. It was just a non-sanctioned wow. contest. We had been cooking pork. We got, we'd cook butts and we'd cook ribs. Chicken. And, and chicken, but no, that wasn't even chicken. wasn't even a main category. Mm, we didn't even, I don't even know if I did chicken back then. I didn't. I don't think. I think I always let somebody else do it. Uh, that's back when you were running on your chicken. That right? was way before. No, this was before, before that. that. Yeah, Dang. this was it's, before that. Been a long time yeah, ago. I think we did whole chickens back then. Whoever did them, I didn't cook them back then. But um, so Here my cousin, cousin I had a cousin from Arkansas. The contest was kind of in his backyard. He's from a, re, real close right there, and he said, "I'm the brisket man." He can cook them. He knows all about brisket. He, uh, his dad was from Texas. And I was like, man, you got it. You, you know, you want to cook brisket? Yes. We're signing you up for this category. And so they didn't have any kind of meat inspection. He could just show up with, with brisket. whatever, yeah. Yeah. So he had it marinated. He had it in this big Tupperware tub, you know, and it's <laughs> soaking in this thing. Probably had it in there three or four days. And it's got garlic and onions and peppers and no telling what all. And it's this is, his, you know, famous brisket marinade from somewhere. And so we get it out, and this is on Friday. Now, Friday morning, first time getting there setting up, he shows up with the brisket. It's ready to roll. He's like, we got like, to get this thing on. It's going to take 24 hours to cook it, right? I think so I'm he, like, okay. I yeah, think you he know. took off work and everything. Yeah, like, yeah. working has probably been off all month since Monday <laughs> working on that brisket. It looked like. I don't even know where he got it. Where you could buy a brisket that size back then, I don't know. He might have drove to Texas and got it. But – and so, so we get it fired up, and I'm like, what smoker do you want to cook it on? Oh, you got to cook it on this Weber Smoky Mountains. That's the only way to cook one. But first, we need a grill. And so I'm like, okay, what are we going to do with the grill? We had one because we were cooking some other ancillaries. And he said, we got we to uh, you know, sear it. And I said, are you going to sear a brisket? And they don't think it was trimmed or anything. It was just marinated. And so he puts it in the – he puts it – we get the Weber hot. You know, it's like 15 minutes, gets it all good and charred up. 15 minutes, and then we throw it on the Weber Smoky Mountain. It's about 10 o'clock on a Friday. And then we begin to drink cold beer because that's what we do back then. <laughs> <laughs> and we're drinking all day and carrying on. I'm, you know, I'm in charge of the festivities and Waylon's not even there. Yeah. 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 The I'm DJing and, and we're the doing the strawberry shots and we've got Jaeger Monster. We've got it all. You know, it's, it's a party. That's what we were doing. And so that's it gets time that night. We had a hotel there. room. We left and Bob was, he was still cooking his brisket. I got, you know, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to put it out here. We're going to cook it all night. It'll be ready the next morning we turn in. And I was like, all right, man, you sure you got it? And he's like, I got it. And he'd been running this thing. By that time, just they had to put more fuel in the in the Smoky Mountain. So uh, Justin was cooking with us. And he he was going to take the water pan out. And he poured it all over his foot and scalded it. And up, he had cooler foot. We, he ended up <laughs> sitting the rest of the day with his foot off in a cooler. <laughs> and so we go back to the hotel. Well, evidently they really got to party after that because there was pictures of them like giving blackberry brandy to some Clydesdale horses that were there and they were just <laughs> having a big old time. Well, I guess Bob's wife at the time uh, got mad at him at and showed time. and showed up out there in the middle of the night and started. You know, they they had a good you know how young married folks do. I guess I don't know. It wasn't like me, but they got to having a pretty good little argument. She accused him of loving that brisket more than her, and she pulled the brisket off the smoker, threw it at him, and I don't know if it knocked him out or if it. How, <laughs> when I got there the next morning, he was passed out on the on the trailer, with the brisket under his head as a pillow. It had been <laughs> off the pit, was cold, and there's there's our brisket, there's our brisket man, and so wake up, brisket man. <laughs> wake up. So we got to wake him up. We get the brisket back on the pit, and get it fired back up, and then it comes time to cut it. He don't know how to cut a brisket. Turns out. They're just chopping at it. And I was like, man, no, y'all got to get back. So we got Waylon over to, there. And, you had to put it back on the smoker after oh, yeah. it had been off. I don't know how long it had been off. So this was the story we got that had, that's how it ended up on the ground. And it, <laughs> that she threw it at she, she, No, she's the one that said she threw it at him. I knew that happened. 
she was somebody they called us or called me and was like telling me you know it's over you know yeah. this, this is it. it's one of those you know you get in the middle of the night on a that, anyway it's, we, we don't party like that anymore so we get the brisket cut and turn in and then out of all, i don't think there was 50 something teams there we were second i was like there's no way we had second place brisket so bob became the brisket man <laughs> And so there for four or five contests, you know, which we weren't doing that many back then. No, there weren't very many um, contests. Yeah, and this was before category. KCBS was really in our area. Then we got into cooking and, um, you know, cooking and getting better at brisket. And I learned how to cook. I had my yeah. first taste of a 180 uh, brisket at Goat Days in Millington. This was five or six years later, you know. Yeah. I'd done cooked some briskets by then, but I knew I finally got that taste of what a it took it was to actually win a brisket. Redneck grillers. Yeah, they actually got a 180 brisket in the Royal. Too. Did they? They 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 the were year before they, they were hot. It. They yeah. were real hot back then. Um, and man, um, they I got a piece of their brisket and a burn in, and from then on, once I had that, it gave me something to shoot for. And then we started killing it with brisket. Yeah. We got you know we get four or five 180s there was in two, a row. Two seasons where brisket was our top best category. category. Yeah. yeah, and so from then on, I learned I, I knew I knew what to do. And uh, we figured out how to trim it and how to, you know, how to how to prepare it and how to get that flavor they were looking for at the time. There was a few um, in the early days of KCBS where you, I remember y'all searing a brisket. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was we, a few times. No, we did the the, the the cousin Bob method there for a while on the Weber kettle. <laughs> he got second place. Yeah, he got if he got it once, it had to be right, right? Yeah. So that's, that's uh, that was our mentality back then. That was before we really, really, you know, let's let's before I before I had any much success what is the that was, that was the start of it that was when we started we had a big team back there. there's 20 people on killer yeah. hogs it and was it was party it was we showed up with three kegs and a bar and you know the whole nine Speakers. yards and if we turned something in great but but if not we was gonna win the party and we did we won a lot of parties but then we also started getting calls like the brisket man got his call yeah. and we started getting rib calls and we started getting serious and that's where that's where it all started but man those were the good old days <laughs> I still got one of those in me, Shell. I need to go. Okay. Can I throw a good one and you come out there and throw the brisket at me? Maybe I'll win first place. Mm, sure. All right. <laughs> sure. You can throw a brisket at your head. You mean get drunk and mad and throw a brisket hey, at your head. We can make do you remember happen. Mike? He got he got ran out of Kentucky for throwing a brisket at somebody, didn't he? Yeah. Ooh. That's not I good. I haven't seen him around. I hadn't either. I like old Mike. That made like national news. Yeah, that was a thing. The woman was assaulted with a brisket. <laughs> so I know of two instances with people that I know that were involved in a brisket assaulting. <laughs> one What's of them the odds with of a trophy. That? One of them got a trophy for and became the brisket man. The other one, yeah, might have gotten incarcerated <laughs> for a brief period of time. <laughs> it happens. It, it happens. That's barbecue, man. What do it you, happens. What do you think some of the biggest mistakes you've made cooking brisket? Well, the biggest one's probably not knowing how to trim it, you know, or trimming some of it off and then not knowing how to cook it. Because brisket's not difficult. You get some seasoning on it, heavy dose of salt. If you you got to put brisket. some salt on the brisket. You got to. That 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 piece I've taken a bad oh, choice or I don't think I've ever cooked a select, but I've cooked some cheap choice briskets and I've made them taste really good by seasoning them with enough salt. Getting you know, getting some flavor on it. And then getting some smoke on it to where you get the outside right. And then taking the time to finish it. Don't get in a rush and try to, you know, hurry up a brisket and think you're going to take it off early. It's got to go to a little north of 200 degrees. And then it has to rest. That's what a lot of people don't do to them. you got to rest them. All these brisket restaurants that are cooking them, they're cooking them overnight. Or, you know, they're, they're taking them off. And they're resting for a long time yeah. before they serve them at lunch or wherever. They're, and oh, that's they're what makes them so at good. Like six some of them, yeah, some of them come off at eleven at night, and then they'll hold them all night and yeah. serve them the next day. So, but they're you know, got them in proofing. Yeah, but they're still. I mean, they're held, yeah, but they're, they're still held. being held. Yeah, but and they're just so, keeping them above. That's the what right makes side. them so good. So don't make the mistake of thinking you're going to take it right off the pit and you're going to slice it right away, and it's going to be as good. So, um, if you, you know how I learned that, a holding brisket. How? Because we were going to contest and we would, you know, cook our brisket up to the point where we we're going to turn it in. We'd slice it. Put it in the box, turn it in. Think we had, you know, decent brisket, and then it get killed. And then we had all this leftover brisket. We put it in a bag, put it in a cooler, and take it home a couple hours later. And we try it, and it would be moist. It'd be tender. It'd be so much better just holding in the bag in a cooler for two or three hours. And so we we said, okay, we're gonna start putting our brisket on early, and then holding it 
And then, man, our scores went straight up yeah. from holding brisket. And you know, I know, I know of some guys on the circuit that were doing that. They would cook their brisket first and get it done on, on Friday. Friday night. Yeah. And then just bring it back the next day. Um, and it would, you know, and they won a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. would kill it. It would kill it. So there's something, there's something to the hold. And that's why I preach and, it. I preach it and everything I do is hold, hold. Well, I actually thought about that when you reheated that brisket for lunch yesterday and that yeah, it was, I was been, like, Ooh, I'd turn this good. in. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was that good. Yeah. I was like, I kind of understand what those guys are doing. Huh? I, um, so, uh, you know, talking about brisket needs a lot of seasoning. There was one time where you uh, were seasoning salt and pepper on your brisket and the lid came off the top of the seasoning. <laughs> dumped it all and over it. dumped I it all that. over it. And you were like, what do I do? You know, I you tried said, to get. I'm going to run it. You know, that wasn't a bad. It was good. It was a little bit salty, but. Just a touch. I'm telling you, a, a whole pack of brisket, it's such a dense piece of meat. There's so much protein there. It can take it. Mm-hmm. It can take the it salt. Needs salt. It, it needs it. Needs, it yeah. needs it. Yeah. Um. So, what makes a good brisket to you? Well, me personally, I I don't want any sweetness in my brisket. I want that seasoning, salt and pepper crust on the outside. If it's got some more rub in it, fine. But I want that savoriness, you know, from salt and pepper gives it. Um, I I don't want it um, shot up full of stuff. I like the natural. I like it to yeah. be the beef. I want to taste the beef, but I want to taste a little of the smoke, a little of the flavors but i want it all to accent the beef and that's what to me that's what makes a good brisket i don't care now the best the best i've ever had is wagyu yeah it's awesome it's unbelievable but you can't sit down and eat a lot of it now just a good eating brisket man you give me a good choice brisket cooked right the seasoned uh, you know good salt and pepper and it's got some little bit of smoke on it it's got that texas crust on the outside that's good brisket that is i don't want sauce i'll you know you know what i want to eat with my brisket some pickled onion or and, and or some yeah. jalapenos. Give yeah. me some. Give me some white bread. I really don't need the bread. But that's that's what I like with it. Yeah, um, it's got to be tender. It's got to be juicy. It's mm-hmm. got to have a good flavor. You know, and that's hard to do with a brisket because you know, it is so dense. I found this interesting. I never thought about it. Uh, one of the ladies that was with that lunch and learn group, she asked me, uh, "How come we don't serve it with au jus? And I'd never thought about that because I said, we use the, we use the brisket. When we do comps, we brush it on it, you know, it was, we warmed it back up in some juice, yeah. but you never serve it with it, but you serve prime rib with it or you serve mm-hmm. French dip sandwiches with it on the side. And next time I think uh, when I eat some brisket, I think I'm going to get me a cup of au jus <laughs> that way I can dip it. I bet it'd be delicious. You, there was um, one recipe you were using at competitions where you were doing a red wine Mushroom reduction, yeah, sauce for in and the wrap. Yeah, yeah. I bet that would be good Sorry. on the side on the with side. it. It's yeah. kind of like a steak sauce. It's yeah. almost like a restaurant a demi glaze glaze. Or yeah, you didn't that. take it, um, but if you t- kept cooking it for a little bit, maybe put a touch of butter. Yeah, in reduced it, it even yeah. further. Yeah, and that'd be good. Make a little thicker. Ooh. Damn, that sounds good. Um, it? You know, some people have crumbly briskets, and I know could that be because you put too much injection in it? Uh, yeah, sometimes phosphates can make it do that on the edges. A lot of times it's just because they hadn't been rounded off or when you're trimming it. Um, that's what causes it to crumble. Like the worst place that's going to crumble on a brisket is going to be that thin edge on a flat. Well, we take that off and you notice in the recipe, I had a, I had a, 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 in that video, I had a piece of the brisket on the edge. I just took that off, squared it off. And that comes in the trimming because if you know it's going to crumble up, it's going to make an ugly slice. Well, I want it, I want the flat to be uniform across it. If you overcook it, it's going to crumble. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things it's going to do. I mean, you can't help it, but sometimes it just happens. Um, sometimes it crumbles on us. You just do the best you can to use a good knife and get through it. If it crumbles, you just get some bread and make sandwiches. That's right. You eat chopped brisket. There ain't nothing wrong with chopped brisket. There ain't no bad brisket. I mean, I've had some. You say, yeah, it's bad. Well, there is bad brisket. I'm going to take I've that back. Dry... I can always put some, some uh, beef broth or. You know, yeah, some, mix up something there. and recon- and get some moisture on it, but you can't take away that smoke. And that's where, so have you ever had, <laughs> where was we cooking? I think it was goat days. The guy brought me some brisket and I swear he cooked it with cross ties. It was, it was like, it, you know, he took, he cut up some phone poles that had been laying down and covered with tar. It. Oh man, it was the worst. And you taste, you talk about tasting for a week later. What'd you say? It was all, good boy. man, I told him, I said, <laughs> I don't know what you did. Honestly, I don't know what you did, but I think you used too much smoke. It's just a little too much for what the judges want or what 
what I think would be or anybody would want. It yeah. was too much smoke, and he knew it. I think he knew, but he was he was running his homemade pit and he was feeding it. You know, he was on, feeding it green oak probably <laughs> <laughs> the whole night and all day, and it was rough. I mean, I've had that before. You got to back up smoke. You know, it's one thing. To, if you're using it like I do on the stick burner, it's got to be dry. It's got to be. It's got to be ready to give off BTUs. Mm-hmm. It's not about you're not you're not putting off thick smoke. It's, I mean, we you could barely even see it. Did you notice when you're filming? Yes, I was trying to get like you could see it. I could see it if I got in the right light. Yeah, but it's real faint. Thin blue smoke, but it, I couldn't get it on camera. You, the only thing you knew it's running is because you look at the dial and you look at the at the, the heat signatures coming yeah, off a little dancing monkeys was. off the top. Yeah, yeah. But you don't really see smoke. Why do you call because, it dancing monkeys? That's is what, that just a saying? Mark Williams called it. I don't know. Uh. <laughs> that's what he called him. I don't know. But anyway, that's uh yeah. So that's I mean that's bad brisket to me using the wrong kind of wood. And there's a, you can, brisket's probably the easiest meat to mess up. Yeah, I mean it really is. I guess that's why. And it's, it's a measure a of a good pit measure. You know, of a good barbecue guy, whatever you're gonna call yourself. It's it's that's the brisket is one of the ones. If you can cook good brisket, mm-hmm. I guarantee you, you can probably cook. Yeah. You know how to run your pit. Mm-hmm. You understand yeah. everything. Yeah. You understand how long you have to break that meat down. The, the, you know how to watch tines and temps. Right. Yeah. Um, so do you like full or butcher paper for wrapping? Personally, to eat it, I like butcher paper. For contest, I always use full because we're worried about catching the, the drippings. Yeah. We want that liquid. Um, you, Eating, you ain't going to beat butcher paper. Yeah. Not for, not for the bar. I think so, too. But like you said, you don't. You, you don't get the juice. You sacrifice the juice. You don't get the juice. This cord's giving me. Kinds of fits. <laughs> there was one contest where we, we cooked a brisket and you pulled off the uh, the point, you cubed it, put it in your juice, put it back on to make your burn ends. And somewhere in that burn in process, it got over sauce or over smoked. It got a real bad bitter taste. Then we pulled it in, we started to make our blind box. Um, and we decided we're not using those burn ends. They're terrible. We're not using it. But the flats were, the, the you know, the flat, the slices were really good. So we turned those in. And after the contest was said and done, before they announced awards, somebody came over and was like, can I try your brisket? Because that was when we were tearing it up in mm-hmm. brisket. And so y'all the guy said, yeah, here you go. And let them eat some of those burn ends. And then you got like a 180 in brisket, and they were probably thinking. That's the worst, right? I remember that, too. They were trying to do a little shig. They were trying to do a little shig. Yeah, we we (laughs) shigged them, all right. We gave them those smoky bird ends. I know what happened. That's it, 180 right there. They they probably thought it was rigged, didn't they? Little did they know that's not what we turned in. Um, Hey, I've done that a lot of times, though. What, not turn in a bad burn well, we No, give somebody that ask. I mean, <laughs> just whatever's right there in front of you. Because yeah. at the best of what we had went in the box. Yeah. Like you might, you know, you take a pork bud, for instance. You might get the piece of it that's dry or tough or didn't get rendered. Mm-hmm. And you didn't taste what really went in, so. And the work, yeah. Yeah. The back end that went to it. Um, have you ever not wrapped a brisket? Just put it on there and let it cook? No wrapping? I have, yeah. Just when, I, when I'm cooking a lot of them, especially like for a catering job or something. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we'll just put them on let them roll. But. We've always wrapped them on the back end, like when they're done. I've never, you know, took it straight off the pit and served it. Yeah. It's always been wrapped up or in a pan or something and held for several hours. And so you can do, you can, you can get it there cooking it. That's what, that's what some of those restaurants do. They never wrap them until at the end they're, they're done. Then they wrap them and hold them for hours. So that works. When you um, pull a brisket off the pit and you put it in a dry cooler, mm-hmm. what's your time frame looking like? You want to hold it at least two hours. Two is, hours is what I like to shoot for. An hour minimum. Got? Yeah. What do you What do you got though? What you, could you take it to? Temperature could you go wise? five six hours. That's what I'm oh, asking. Oh yeah, man. I've never. You know, we did that experiment with that butt where it went. I don't know eight hours in one, but I would I would I would be comfortable with six all day long. Mm-hmm. You know, that's all day before it gets to 140. And it's still going to be pretty warm. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's Heck still, yeah. Yeah. You could pull it out after six hours in that dry cooler mm-hmm. and serve it. Most definitely. Warm, yeah. Um, so, can you pre-cook a brisket? Uh, yeah, I did it, it this week. It does take a long time. Uh, I, I cooked one. You know, that was, if you noticed in that video, I had it wrapped up on the side on Tuesday. And I didn't serve it till Thursday. It was just as good. Uh, pre-cooking, it's fine. Uh, I would I would definitely get it cooled as quick as you can and then get it wrapped up and back in the refrigerator whole. 
and then slice it up, you know, before you're going to put it in the pan and put some juice with it to reheat it. That's the best way. And you can do it. It's the, the best way. Yeah, we, you know, I've done them. I've done them like that. I've gave them as gifts. I've yeah. traveled with them and reheated them. I mean, they're great. You can vacuum seal the whole pan, buy those expandable bags. It works great. And brisket does pretty good reheated. Um, you know, I, I usually like we did this one. We just stuck it on the on the pit at two fifty and just let it go for about an hour and a half. It was back perfect. Mm-hmm. I mean, so it's real easy to do, especially. But you need, like, say, if you cook it in butcher paper, just m- make sure you know you're going to mix up uh, some beef broth or some kind of solution to put in there to you know to go with it. I usually go for something savory, like beefy. You know, use yeah. some use some uh, better beef than broth. bouillon and water, or some beef broth, or some injection would work. You know, if you could, if you buy a pre-made injection, that would work. Some of those brisket mopping sauces would work. Anything like that. I wouldn't just put, like, apple juice. That probably yeah. wouldn't be that good. Well, that's a little sweet. Yeah, it's too sweet. Sure in it too. What's the best brisket you've ever had? Oh, let me ask you two points. Sure. What's the best brisket you've ever had and the best brisket you've ever cooked? Best I've ever had. Man, that, that got Little Miss Barbecue in Arizona we had <laughs> man, that's that, what back I was in November. Too. I've had some good brisket now. I've had some good brisket over in Lockhart. I've had some, you know, I've had some good comp brisket from guys, but as far as one that sits in my head, and maybe it's just because it's the last best one I had, but I would put that brisket up against mm-hmm. anybody. Um, I would You know, you know who else cooked a good brisket that I've had, and it was uh Brian McClarty when he was doing the catering for the. Uh, oh yeah, the um, SCA SCA event. championship in yes. the Fort Worth. Man, he brought some brisket that was just that was knockout, really and he good. was feeding thousand people. I was like, man, how are you turning out brisket like this for the masses? Because you know it's hard to do for the mm-hmm. masses. He's like, man, this is what we do in the restaurant. So he's out there outside, I don't know, outside of Dallas somewhere. Yeah, I wish I remember really the name good. of his restaurant. He's Cause I good. got a very small pace. Cause eh. yeah, you never know. You think a buffet style, yeah. an event, somebody doing brisket not gonna be that good. No, man, it and was. And I went back and got some more. Yeah, yeah, it was killer. It was good. But uh, that What's was it? that's the best I've ever cooked. I mean, the best I've ever cooked eating is probably. One like I just did. Yeah, on this that, was, that, one. that was up there. Yeah. Now, the best okay. I've ever, I mean, we've cooked some, I've cooked some, you know, Snake River Golds that, competition that'll hard, put, it'll knock you out. It's so good. It I mean, those, but it's, but it's totally different. You're talking about so rich. I mean, they're tender, they're moist, they're juicy, they're packed full of flavor. They're usually, they usually have to be a little sweet to do good in the contest mm-hmm. and all that. And that's not my style. That's not what I want to eat. Now, are they, are they fantastic and, Make your eyes roll back, yeah, but you just can't sit down. It's not it's not what I think of when I think of eating brisket. And the competition's got that way. It's just been, you know, because it, it's, I hate to say it, but it is true to a point that it's a sauce contest too. Yeah. Everything gets sauced. And, man, I don't want sauce near my brisket. I really don't. I don't like not sauce. Not if it's it. good. If I'm not not if it's sauce good. to the brisket. Yeah, if I have to sauce it, it's not good. Yeah. Um, good was- brisket, it should be moist and tender. It should have that little bark on the top, a little smoke ring, but not overly smoked. Little piece, little run of fat on the bottom. Run of fat on the bottom. If I'm eating flat, you know, nine times out of ten, I'm not going for the flat. No, when they say I'm you going, want lean or fatty, yeah. fatty. What well, I heard Double somebody, down. I heard, I saw somebody say that, call it lean or moist the other day. <laughs> I was like, why would I want to eat? Is lean dry? I don't want that. I'll take the fatty moist. That's how I roll. <laughs> Um, it was good. There was one brisket that you cooked. Uh, it was at a contest in Ridgeland, Mississippi. And, man, it melted in your mouth. I mean, it melted in your mouth. And there's been some times when you've cooked some burn-ins for competitions where, you know, you cut them up, put them back in your sauce, put them back on. It was the best single bite you've ever had. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't really remember the individual ones, but we've had some good ones. I mean, we've cooked, Those are just some that stick out in my head. I've you've been cooking really those Wagyu briskets for, man... I wouldn't think of how much money I spent at Snaker Farms. Because there was a while we were buying, you know, a bunch a year. I mean, for me, it's a lot of money at $200 a pop. Yeah, when you're cooking 20 And before that, contests. we were cooking Stroobs, which you kind of don't think you can get the Stroobs anymore. Those, those were probably, if I had to say the best brisket I ever cooked was a Stroob brisket. Well, and Kevin that, down that there was when we were on. Nines. Well, those are, yeah, those are good. But yeah. I haven't cooked, we haven't been on a roll and having consistent quality briskets like we were getting those Stroobs back yeah. in the day. And you could, man, those were awesome. Well, I mean, we run five or six 180s with them. I yeah. mean, it was it was really, really good briskets. And I've, we've had some good runs since then, but nothing like those days. Well. But is that. Any other tips, pointers you have about brisket? No, I mean, it's just. Stay I got, away from the little ones. Yeah. 
cook, you a, cook, cook a decent brisket. sized brisket, work on it. Don't get discouraged if it doesn't turn out bad because you can always chop it, mix it with something, do something with it. Yeah. But you'll eventually get it. It's one of those pieces of meat that it takes a while to, to master, if you ever master it, because there's some times I'm scratching my head cooking brisket. But it's, it's I mean, I, th- I think it's a good challenge. It's a good, you know, it, it, it ain't. It is a challenge because, I mean, you have a lean cut. You're trying to turn it into something delicious. Mm-hmm. You, yeah, you're turning about, stew meat, essentially, into delicious <laughs> or barbecue. Or <grind>, something to <laughs> grind, yeah. <laughs> hey, and ground brisket. Don't throw them trimmings away. Save them and grind them. They're great for making burger or mixing them with your deer if you yeah. make your own, process your own deer. Oh, no, we've done. Brisket uh, burger is awesome. Yeah, brisket burger. A lot of times I'll take a chuck roast and mix it with some ground brisket fat or just mix it all together. It makes a really good burger. Some of the best Double ground. Yeah. We've ever had. Um, But that's about it for the podcast today. Uh, We got coming up. We were talking about, did we talk about the contest we're judging? No. Tomorrow we're, we are, we got a little local contest. We got asked to judge a little, it's supposed to be a friendly contest, but they're giving away like 1200 bucks and then paying out each category too and giving out a couple of grills. Hey, I'll let you cook it. You're a ringer. You have to change your name, wear a mask or something. We can come in with like a uh, wrestler. <laughs> and <laughs> pull it over. off. <laughs> yeah, got y'all. Give me that 1200. <laughs> now we're going to judge that. And then uh got Cosmo coming next week. Um, I'm excited about Cosmo coming. He's going to show me how to cook a recipe. We're going to try to get him on the podcast if he has time. He's making a quick trip uh, to come get a trailer or something. And I said, yeah. man. While you're here, you know, come by the house and let's shoot a video. So. Yeah, he has his own YouTube channel. So he's got his, yeah. So Cosmo's YouTube channel. And- uh, he's if y'all don't know Cosmo, he's got a lot. I mean, I'm sure everybody knows who he is, but he's got a line of brisket uh, injections, sauces, seasonings. glazes, seasonings, wing seasonings. He's got all kinds of products. Just opened up a new store. A world champion steak cooker. He won. Right? He won the champ. The first championship I went to, he actually won. I think it was like 15 grand. He won too. So. That's a lot. He's a, he's a heck of a cook. Mm-hmm. So he's he does comps. Guy, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a he's an Oklahoma guy. guy so yeah. looking forward to that. And then uh, we got a steak contest coming up. I'll uh, mention that again at uh, Memphis Barbecue Supply. Yeah, Memphis Jimmy Shotwell's. Supply. It's on the seventeenth. If uh, you probably take Michael to, that one with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. He wants to cook it. Yeah. Which I need to go ahead and send my I send my entry. I need to do that. Um, but if you're looking for a contest to do in the Memphis area, that'd be a great one. To start yeah. with, yep. <laughs> Well, um, Minnie says it's time to go. Hey, the dog says it's time to go. She's growling and running, so she must have heard something. Uh, if you'd like to connect with Malcolm, you can do so on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course YouTube at How to Barbecue Right. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell at Instagram and Twitter. Hey, thank y'all for listening today, and hope you enjoyed it. We'll see y'all next time.